Hi, my name is Libby Kogel, and I am an associate professor here at Mizzou in the Anthropology Department. Today in my talk um, about Neanderthals and bone strength in the past, um, I talked a lot about how uh, we see in general um, a decline in bone strength um, over the last million years, right? Particularly we see a decline um, associated with sedentary lifestyles um, like um, agriculture um, and industrial living. Um, and we see very high levels of bone loading um, in hunting and gathering populations of all sorts. Um, but particularly in Neanderthals and early modern humans. So um, we look at um, the size um, of cross-sections of bone, so particularly um, the amount of bone um, and the distribution of bone in order to determine how strong that bone was while that individual was alive. Essentially, uh, what we do uh, is we model long bones like the humerus or the femur um, as though they were engineering beams. Um, and by applying those formula, uh, we can determine how strong an individual's bones were and compare that to another individual or compare one population to another um, and make conclusions about how active or inactive particular populations were in the past. The best types of activities uh, for increasing bone density seem to be um, activities that are cyclical and not static, right? So anything like walking or running uh, where the strain is applied and released, applied and released. Um, unusual loads, right? Uh, so things that the body hasn't done over and over and over. Uh, things where it's a, a, a new experience, something's changed up. Um, also, um, it looks like uh, brief loads are pretty much good enough. Um, so high intensity brief loads uh, tend to be better for uh, creating the types of osteogenic forces that bone needs to be laid down. In order to keep everyone's attention while I was talking about critical matters of, of bone strength and health, um, I did a deadlift demonstration uh, where I um, started off uh, deadlifting 125 pounds um, and slowly increased the weight as I deadlifted during the course of my talk um, and it ended up finishing by doing a 300 pound deadlift, which was a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I had a great time. I always have a great time at Saturday Morning Science. Uh, the questions are always great. Uh, people, the people that are coming to see these things are really, really interested in the topic and super engaged. And there was a lot of nodding going on while, while I was talking, which is always, always reassuring that your audience is still with you um, and interested and awake. So yeah, I had a great time.